Hey, hey, tribe, welcome back to Ray 2 practice question number 29. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's jump into it. A school social worker meets with a student and his mother to discuss the student's disruptive behavior in class. During the meeting, the social worker notices that the student has a bruise on his leg and inquires about it. The mother states, he's fine. He clearly isn't responding to discipline. What should the social worker do next? A, request to speak with the student's father. B, inform the mother that a CPS, Child Protective Services, a report will need to be filed. C, continue with the meeting since the student is not complaining about the bruise on his leg. Or D, refer the student to a physician. So as always, reread through the question, reread through the answer choices, pause the video, select your best answer, unpause it, and then we'll jump into the explanation. Okay, if you picked B, you're correct. So for A, um, request to speak with the student's father. This would be incorrect. Why? The student has an unexplained bruise on his leg by a parent slash caregiver, which warrants a mandated report. Further investigation will be conducted by Child Protective Services or CPS. So we wouldn't want to go with A. For B, um, inform the mother that a CPS, again, Child Protective Services report will need to be filed. This is correct. Why? So according to the Child Welfare Information Gateway and uh, a link will be uh, in the description to this article and it does a, a, a really nice job of breaking down um, different things to look out for as a mandated reporter for signs of abuse and everything. Um, and again, a link will be in the description. But according to the Child Welfare Information Gateway, some people typically certain types of professionals such as teachers or physicians are required by state laws to report child maltreatment under specific circumstances. Some states require all adults to report suspicions of child abuse or neglect. Individuals required to report maltreatment are called mandatory reporters. Social workers are one of those professionals. And signs of physical abuse. Um, any child exhibiting the following uh, signs may be a victim of physical abuse. Um, has unexplained injuries such as burns, bites, bruises, broken bones, or black eyes, um, has fading bruises or other noticeable marks after absence from school, uh, seems scared or anxious, depressed, withdrawn, or aggressive, seems frightened of his or her parents, and protests or cries when it is time to go home, shrinks at the approach of adults, shows changes in eating and sleeping habits, reports injury by a parent or another adult caregiver, abuses animals or pets. So these are, again, some of the common signs to look out for. And consider the possibility of physical abuse when a parent or other adult caregiver exhibits the following. Um, offers conflicting, convincing, or no explanation for a child's injury or provides an explanation that is not consistent with the injury. Uh, shows little concern for the child. Uh, sees the child as entirely bad, burdensome, or worthless. Uh, use harsh physical discipline with the child or has a history of abusing animals or pets. So again, this is some of the behavior to look out for by the parent or the caregiver. C would be incorrect of continue with meeting uh, since the student is not complaining about the bruise on his leg. This is incorrect. Why? Again, the student has an unexplained bruise on his leg by a parent slash caregiver, which warrants a mandatory report, even if he isn't complaining about the bruise. Because again, Think of this as um, like it, it, it triggers. It's a what I identify as a red flag. Whenever we're reading through any of these uh, these questions and a safety concern comes up, that's not appropriate. That has not been appropriately addressed within the question itself. We want to make sure we follow up on that and not just bypass that safety concerns, uh, whether it comes to. Uh, children, if it's uh, safety concerns for the actual client or safety concerns for uh, someone else like that Tarasov, we have to follow up with that because, again, we are as social workers mandated reporters. And as we scroll down to D, um, refer the student to a physician. This would be incorrect. Why? So while a referral to see a physician may be helpful, it's not the next thing we would do. After filing a CPS report against Child Protective Services, a CPS will follow up with the family and conduct their own investigation of the situation and instruct the family on how to proceed. So again, 
you know, as we're going through this and we identify a red flag, as we did in this question, because remember, the question states, a school social worker is meeting with a student and his mother to discuss the student's disruptive behavior, whatever it may have been, been in a class clown or, you know, whatever it may be. During the meeting, the social worker notices that the student has a bruise on his leg and, the, and inquires about it. So the social worker is inquiring about the bruise. The mother states, he's fine. He clearly isn't responding to discipline. What should the social worker do uh, next? So again, given the answer choices of A, B, C, and D, B, informing the mother that a CPS report would need to be filed, that will would have to occur next because the bruise is there and is being implied by the mother that, oh, he's not, the child isn't responding to uh, discipline, right? But they have the unexplained bruise there. So that's why we will want to proceed with B and uh, file that mandated report. Okay, Tribe, that's it for today's video. Just again, that was uh, rate two practice question number 29. Quick practice question. And you know what I say of doing at least two practice questions a day helps keep the exam anxiety at bay. We want to be able to stay in that exam state of mind. And, you know, we're not saying to do 20 practice questions, 10 practice questions, you know, at least two, at least two. And if we're doing that every single day and, you know, studying the information portion, like the different topics on exam, doing the two practice questions a day, we're going to be in really good shape to go in there and pass the exam. So you got this. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and tell a social work friend because we don't want to be licensed by ourselves. Also in the description will be linked to our Facebook group for our tribe. Find a study buddy. You know, why go through this process alone if we don't have to? And it helps when we're able to connect with someone else that's also studying for the exam. And that way, you know, you guys can talk and talk about the information you're studying and give each other tips and motivation and help keep each other accountable uh, throughout this studying licensure journey. So <laughs> especially if both of you can uh, celebrate and uh, let us know so the tribe can celebrate you as well. All right, Tribe, I'll see you next video.